Hey guys, Josh with Happy Little Landscapes back again. We're going to do a winter scene today on a 24 by 30 canvas, a little bit smaller than our last one. I'll show you what I've got today. We have uh, Van Dyke Brown, Dark Sienna, Phthalo Blue, Midnight Black, Alizarin Crimson, Titanium White, Cadmium Yellow, and Yellow Ochre. Don't even know where we're going to start here. Don't want it to look like any of my other videos I do, so I have to kind of pretend like I know what I'm doing and make it up as we go along. So, why not? We'll start out with some yellow ochre today. Whole sides, big two inch brush. And then I'm going to put this down and hold this sucker. It'll start moving on me. So, let's do it over here. We'll just start chopping in this sandy, dusty dusty looking color. Don't want to blend it out too much, just kind of want to get it onto the canvas. Get rid of that yellow off the brush. If you've seen my other videos, we use uh, liquid paint thinner to clean our brushes with. So we go into the liquid paint thinner, shake off the excess into a trash can, and then see if you guys can see this. It's like a wire bucket down at the bottom of it, just a $2 Lowe's bucket. Uh, pretty simple, easy, efficient way to keep your house clean if you're using liquid paint thinner. You don't want to be spraying it everywhere. All right, so now that we got that, let's do a little alizarin crimson, which will make a nice pinkish, darkish sky here, just on the, just around wherever. It doesn't, wherever you want to put it. Where you want to put it. I usually try to leave a little white area for uh, where I know my big clouds are going to be. So let's just wish some on there. And like I said, don't worry if it's not blended out. We're going to go back and do that later. We just want to get some color onto the canvas. So without cleaning it, we're going to go right into the phthalo blue, just a little bit of it because it's so powerful. And we're just going to drop it on. It's going to start to mix with the, the pink and give us a little bit of purple. A nice little pretty looking sky. And then we'll take that same blue, a little bit of black, why not a little bit of red. We'll just make our own little, make our own little purpley color with a mix of these three. Just kind of all together. finish just getting the rest of that purple, red, blue, black mixture that we made. And then we'll just drop it in the sky. Again, we haven't really blended anything. We're just kind of dropping on the color right now. So again, we'll get some more of that red and then black. It's going to be this guy gone and we'll make like a, like a bit of, a bit of shadow cloud. We'll see. You never know. You never know where you're going to end up. At least I don't. I never know where I'm going to end up. Just make a little bit of cloud back there. Kind of just lightly coming down in. That looks like a pretty wicked cloud to me. Look at this little sky. And because we have our liquid white on the canvas, you can see down here it's very, very lightly done on there. That helps all the colors that we have to kind of blend into the sky. If you did this with a dry canvas, you're just gonna have splashes of really dark color up there, which is not what we want. So then I'm just taking a two inch brush, haven't cleaned it, still it's got pretty much every color that we have on there, and just making little circles like this. Just little circles. And that's gonna kind of fill in the yellow areas that I don't want, because I don't want a cloud back in here. It's gonna soften the edges of these clouds, just like going in a circle. Little circles, just like that. And to mix the rest of our sky, we just use crisscross patterns like this, or you can go side to side, back the other way. As long as you're making an X pattern, it'll blend it in real nice. And then every so often, just take our brush down here, and we'll just make big, shadows down in our snow down there. Now, we can clean this up. 
All I'm doing is just blending in our colors. So we don't know where one color stops and the other one begins. But I don't want to get all that purple and dark color and go through all my yellow. Otherwise, it'll just, it's going to make everything darker than we want today. Dry the excess off on a paper towel, make it nice and easy. And then I'm going to come in here to my lightest area. You know, what? we'll even take a bit of just a good chunk of titanium white on the end of the brush right there, and we'll just put it right in our lightest area. And just kind of back and forth, making little crescent shapes on both sides. Like that, like this. And then we'll just very lightly start to bring down some of our pinks, bring up some of our light, and just blend it all together until you really can't tell where the white, yellow, pink, red, blue, where you won't be able to see a line. And that's what you want. Remember, now that we go into our color, we don't want to go back into our light area. It's going to drag all that color back in there. You can already see our brush changing in color just from what we've been touching. So you don't want to go out and then come back in. Stay away once you've been out here. Nice pink, blue, purpley, pinky sky there. about how long you take on your sky because the longer you take on your sky the better up the better your painting is going to end up you can't just throw color up there and throw some clouds up and just hope that it's going to be good sides and then we'll come up into our dark side this is our lighter area to be our darker side and just put the black up there we go like I said clean our brush off we're just gonna Wipe along the bottom of the canvas like this. It'll give us some cool colors in our snow. And sometimes I run into, depends on the canvas that you buy, but you can see there's a, a line where that piece that's behind the canvas is. And a lot of the times, you get your hand back behind there if you ever have trouble. Get your hand back behind there. And as long as you're pushing away from it a little bit, you can make that line nice and smooth again. It's a trick I found over the last few months. I said don't worry about how long you take on your sky I like to take the longest amount of time on my sky because it's the most prevalent thing in this painting now if you've done your job enough you should be able to go back and forth across this sky and if your paint's blended in enough then you're not going to drag the stuff from the dark area over here across into your light area and as you can see, everything's fine. 
Now, if you wanted a yellow spot in your sky for your sun or a white spot back there, all you gotta do is just keep taking a little bit of paint on the end of your brush, making a little circle, kind of back and forth, back and forth until you like it. But you do not have to hurry. I have to hurry to keep you guys interested. <laughs> if I take too long, then you guys aren't gonna be interested in the video. good to me. What we can do now is start adding in our kind of our cloud shadows. So in this case, let's take a little bit of the red. We can just kind of throw it in there. Blend it out pretty good. We just want to have a really rough shape of our cloud. however you want it to, but you don't want to have a lot of color up there. You want it to be pretty blended in because we're going to throw white on top of it. So and let's do this. And you just make them wherever you want to make them, but don't make them straight across. No one wants to see anything straight across. That's boring, right? I'm going to do a cloud straight across. Unless they're all like straight across diagonally. So you beat the system out. All right. Now, since we took so much time blending out this yellowy, whitish patch right here, when you come in with the blue, it's not going to turn green. If you have it, if it does, you know you've got too much paint on the canvas. Spend more time blending it out, and then you won't run into those problems. Okay, now on this one, I want a big black, big black cloud across this whole thing. So before that actually, we get the lightest little bit of black. We just make like these clouds that are so far off in the distance you can't even really tell they're there. Just so light. And blend it in, blend it in. You want something back there for people to look at. You're gonna have much bigger clouds in the front. this I've got color on one end of the brush and the other end is clean so I'm kind of making little circles and I flip it over and make little circles to blend it out with. Start getting too much then clean your brush off. But you definitely want to make sure it's dry you don't want to have a wet brush coming up here. Let's do this red blue black mix again kind of like this just oh, wherever we can scrape it off if you ever want to start over with a new color. Notice how we left spaces in between our clouds. Okay, and that gives us the illusion that these clouds are further off in the distance and these ones are much closer up. And with these circles, you'll notice you get these dark areas and light areas. You don't want it to be all the same color. Leave it like that. Don't overdo. Don't overthink it. Leave it just like that. You want to have these gaps and spaces in between. So it looks like a real cloud. You just go and look outside and it's just white or black or gray or whatever. There's so many different hues and colors to those clouds. And all we're doing is just making circular shapes so we like the way that it looks. You don't want to over blend it. You just want to like the way that it looks. Now we can even take some of that red it with our yellowy down here. It's kind of a dark orangey color. And we'll put those back here. Like there was a cloud back here that's just getting hit with some serious sun rays that these other ones just aren't getting. Okay. And let the colors mix together. Let them be yellow and purple and black and let it all mix. We'll have these cool shadowy clouds by the time we get done. Blend it in, blend it in. There, just kind of a 
dark, stormy sky going. And just blend them in, blend them in until you like the way that it looks. Blend it in just like that. Clean off our brush, right into the paint thinner, up in my face, up in your face anyway. Into the trash can, then into the bucket. All right, now I'm gonna get a little bit of this black, bluish, purpley bit one more little time and do like a. That's not dark enough, Josh. Come on. There we go. You wind up in the front up here. Again, just make it a mess. Just make a mess and smooth it over, and then poof, you got clouds. Just like that. That's all you need, some base color clouds way off in the distance, all of them pretty much a different color. And then what we'll do is we'll clear off our Care about any of those colors. We want to use white here. We're going to pull out our white. Doesn't matter if you get a little bit of blue in there, don't worry. Get our little roll of paint, just like Bob Ross does on the edge of the knife, just like that. And then wherever you have a cloud in your mind, you've got to decide, you know, where they are. And then just kind of drop on a little, little bit of paint on the edges of your cloud. You don't want to do too much because when we go to blend it, you don't want to blend and cover up all the little shadow bits that we laid out in the beginning, right? So you just take the corner, tip top corner of the brush. You can see right where it is. Corner of the brush, angle down just like this, and then just very lightly start mixing it up until you like the way that it looks. Once you like the way that it looks, then your cloud is done. It doesn't take a lot of paint. You'll get these textured, layered bits on there. That's what we need our big brush for, so we're gonna wash it again. Now, once we've got our things mixed up, but not overly mixed, you still want them layered on there. Take your big two inch brush, start at the bottom, and just lightly, just lightly, lightly, lightly touch it. Go all the way up to the top, and that's gonna kinda of smush that paint a little bit. All the way up to the top. Right, and then come to the side. Come to the side, side, side. Bam, there's your cloud. Really easy. Easiest way i found to doing it. Uh, you can do it another way too. So you have a fan brush, right? You're like, show me how to make a cloud out of a fan brush. Okay, I will. I usually get up a good amount onto the paintbrush like that. And just kind of, same thing with our knife. Just kind of lay it down, pick it up, drop it in. It's gonna start mixing and turning pink, which is fine. Drop it in, drop it in. Remember, don't use too much. Some of the times I pick up too much, you don't need all of it. Go back to our same little blender brush, right? Just very lightly, very lightly. If you do it too much, it will go away and then you won't have a cloud. So just lightly, lightly, backwards sometimes, forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards. So you kind of mushed and blended on there. Take your two inch brush, swipe up. You can even see, I don't know if you guys can see it, but I can see there's a bit there that's just like a straight line. So I don't like it, I'm gonna do it again. Mix it up just a little as bit. Flap it up, come across, up, across. Like that. Boom. And then you have your little layered cloud with all these little bumps and hills and valleys where the paint is laying on top of each other. Makes it look really realistic. Clean off this fan brush. Let's see. 
Now, I mean, you can do it with any brush. It doesn't matter. You do it with this one inch brush, right? Put some in there, and if you don't want to swirl, say like I got arthritis, I can't swirl, okay? Well, we'll just tap in some clouds. You can just pop them in, just like you do with the bushes and everything else. Just lightly, just very light. All you want to do is disturb the paint a little bit. Fluff up, and now you have these really, really distant, far away clouds that kind of cover over that yellowish, shadowy bit that we did. So the thicker, the more close you want your clouds up, the more paint you have to use to make them more and more textured-y. Textured-y. Yeah, I like it. I'm gonna save it. That's going in the video. I'm not cutting it out. Textured-y. Okay, so for the purposes of the video, we'll go back to the knife. Every so often, get a little bit of blue or red or black color and just mix it very lightly into your knife. Big old chunk of it, and we'll go, let's get a little bit of red in there too, make it a little, a little darker, just a little bit. We're gonna go on this big sucker over here. And just stay on the edges, right? Stay on the edges. Out our big shape, some humps. There's like a valley, it comes down here. If that's too much, you can scrape it off. You can come down, and you can leave a little bit of space in between these so you have room to mix it. Come down like this, come up here, just mush the last bit of it in, and then we'll see where we are when we get over there. Come around, we're gonna start to just do little circles. Like we always do. Like again, don't over mix it. You don't want it all to look the same. You want it to look all messy and hodgepodge and wisps going one way and back the other way and there's too much and there's too little. You don't want it to be the same. There we go. And people are gonna and they're gonna look and find these little bits of blue that we hid in our our white paint initially. So again, we're going to swipe up, and the farther we go, we're going to swipe all the way up, okay? And to the side. What that kind of does is just blurs the clouds. So you still know they're there, you can still see a lot of detail, but it's so far away it's blurry. So you get that big cloud up there. Give this guy some life up here. Smush it on, doesn't matter. Clouds are not a certain shape. They're all different sizes, all different shapes. So don't be worried about if your cloud doesn't look like a cloud. Can't ever tell me that a cloud won't look like that. So I like that. We've got our dark clouds that are so far away that we can't really tell. There's not a lot of detail on them and then we've got our closer clouds up here we're gonna finish up on this side Put a little bit of black in there with these clouds get them nice and dark gray there we go nice dark gray clouds a little bit of white leave a little bit of marbled in there we'll come up over here This big guy. And again, remember to leave room for your blending when you do your, your twisting up. You don't need a lot of room for that. Out here, maybe cut out a little bit. There we go. And then we'll just go back and blend. Softly, softly, softly. Can't overstress how soft you have to touch this. There we go. Make it look like you want it to look. Come back in here. Mix these two. You can see how we have a dark gray layer and a lighter gray. And those are kind of bouncing off each other as we intermix them together. 
and making a lot of cool shadows and looks to our clouds. Every so often, turn back the other way. If you've been doing it this way, turn back the other way. Make a lot of these little wisp up shapes that it'd be hard to do both ways. A little swipe up with our clouds. All these ones we made come to the side. Like so. Swipe up. Come to the side. And just do it until you like the way that it looks. If you ever get a straight line, you can fix it. If you don't ever like it, you can blend it away until it's literally not there anymore. That is the joy of painting. Twist and fluff. A bit of dark in with this since we're in the shadow though. What you guys think if we're all in here? This should be real dark on, in my mind. Much darker than the stuff that's behind it. So what I'm doing is just putting in just pure liquid black from the knife up into the clouds. Only because I fear I figure our sun is over here. And it's casting a light and it's making all this shadowy black over here so you can't have the bottom side of the cloud be super bright white in my mind if the sun is behind it so clean off this brush so again we'll do the same thing we did just take our dark yeah it's making it much stormier especially we get a little bit of black right on the end of the brush and go underneath this guy and that'll just darken it up Take our two inch brush, go back over, swipe up, and then I don't want to, just in case there's paint on the brush, I don't want to come into our light area and swipe this way, so I'm going to swipe this way. Just like that. That looks pretty neat. That looks pretty neat. Even take a little bit of just the pure white, see if we can't make just some far off just a floater back there. Ooh, there's a lot of black on that. But that's okay. No mistakes. Happy accidents. And the best part about having the liquid white on the canvas is we can literally blend this away to where we won't even be able to tell. But I like that black. It gives it a little bit of a shadowy look up at the top of that cloud up there. Real nice. Okay, so now if we've done our job again and our paint is flat enough and consistent enough, we can swipe side to side across the whole thing and not have any paint transfer anywhere else. Here we go. It's almost too dark now where we made those clouds nice and dark. So let's add a little bit of white to them just to, just to see there's a couple little white humps in there there we go perfect I like that a lot actually okay so what I'm going to do now is just sort of make Kind of bring our horizon line down and uh, just kind of make everything nice and blended you know in our sky as we get closer down to the horizon everything gets lighter in hue so if it, even if it's blue up here it's going to be sort of bluish white as you get down to the end so you kind of got to make this look almost white and mix it all up Get some snow down here. Go over everything. We shall see. Where do we go? Where do we go from here? Okay, so what we'll do is make our trees out of a couple of the browns that we have here. A little bit of Van Dyke brown, a little bit of dark sienna. them up nice and marbly over here still a bit of white paint from our palette and just mix the rest of that up and that'll give us this nice marbled 
in a woodsy color. So we'll go back, we'll get our fan brush. This one's a, what are we looking at, size four. You can use a six or an eight or whatever, it doesn't matter, whatever one you have. Get our fan brush, get that going. And then we'll come in from the side over here, nice and tall up on our thing. And what we're doing is just pushing into the canvas at an angle, and that's just gonna use the top half of the brush. And then once you start getting low on paint, flip it around and you got another bit. Imagine you don't want to make them all one size all the way across. That's going to look like a straight, you know, razor blade. You don't want that. You want it to almost look like a heartbeat. Just imagine in your head when you're doing it. And just up and down, up and down, up and down. You want to leave these little white areas that are in there. You want to leave some areas darker. You want to leave some areas lighter. And it's going to look really neat. I think I made enough initially. It starts to get all spread out. Yeah. And then as we get over to the side, we're just going to trail off into Nothing. They get a little bit smaller and they get a little further away. And then we'll come in here with the bottom. Just kind of fill in those holes. And bring it down like this. There we go. Now, every so often you can take either midnight black or, you know, your your uh, Van Dyke Brown. Go back in and just pop a couple little tree tops in there throughout your whole thing. A couple little shadows, a little black tree top, a little brown tree top. The problem, the only thing you want to do is don't overdo it. It starts looking really cool and you're like, ooh, I could do more of that and more of that. And then it's all the same color again and you've messed it all up. at all different heights, all different sizes, and you got your little black bits in there. What we'll do now is we'll clean off our brush. All right. So, and every so often, my sister just gave me these brushes for uh, for Christmas. It's this little teeny tiny fan brush, little sucker. So what I want to try to do with it, just to get a little bit of detail, is grab up a little bit of paint on this one and just pick one of our trees out here. It doesn't matter which one it's gonna be. And make him a lot more detailed. A couple little sticks and branches and that'll make people's eye go towards that and go, oh yeah, those are pine trees out there. I've seen that before. Get a little bit more. Do a little way over here. There you go. pine trees that's how you know what they are people will be like oh I see it now I see the pine tree now that's cool this little brush I figured it'd be good for like a this exact thing these little tips of, and tops of the trees which are hard to make on a much bigger brush to make them real small you know what I mean so tried it out it worked worked pretty good Alright, so what we'll do now is take our one inch brush, we're going to give ourselves some bit of land here. And what we want to do is just pull straight sideways. You don't want to pull down, otherwise you're going to have this big embankment. And it depends on what you do with your brush, depends on what your ground looks like. So, back here we'll just pull straight sideways and we don't want to make it too, too deep, you know what I mean? You don't want to go too far up your trees. But every so often, you want to come down and start again. That way it looks like there's a like a break in the forest. You see what I'm talking about? If you come down here to where there's a, just a little drop down, and then you come down, there'll be a drop, and then a drop, and drop, and drop, and further you get. Come back here, 
grab some more. I don't want to get in your guys' way. those out just like that make our little bit of forest in the back and since we are painting a winter scene we might as well throw a big old pea block of snow on there right paint our snowy scene same thing you want to leave it very globby for the snow banks you're going to use a lot of white paint because you want it to glob up like this you want it to be really textured like it is in the clouds and so the only, way, the only way to do that is by leaving a big ridge of paint, just like this, a right? big old fat chunk, a line, every so often, and then not smushing it out. That's going to be the trick. Don't smush it all away. And don't let it fall off your brush. Your wife will get mad at you. Or your husband. All I'm doing is going pretty much straight sideways, just dropping in some snow drifts and big thick bits of snow. It's fine that we're picking up the brown that's underneath. Don't let that worry you. As long as we got some nice big thick bits back there, then we can take our two inch brush and just like we did with our um, clouds, we can lift up across and that's going to give us these cool little snowy hills where the snow is blown across and kind of piled up on itself it's really neat and if you don't like the way it looks you can push on a little bit harder change your shape go back and fluff it out again okay now down to our the base of our trees you never see trees with nothing at the bottom, so let's give it a little bit of a bush. We'll just go through these two browns here. Same color as our trees, but they're gonna be a little bit darker. And then every so often, we'll just pop in just a bit darker area where you can see that's, you know, gonna separate the bottom like that. So there's a bush or something out there. Just like that, that way it's not a not just a single line, straight line across. And if you like, you can put a little bit of grass just by popping in little bits. The lighter and lighter, the further away you go in our mind, right? Again, go straight up on these bits. It'll look like tall bits of grass kind of growing up out of our snow. do this before we do our other bit because we're going to come in with another set of trees over here so why not take the littlest bit of our white our liquid white if this is going to be a snowy painting we'll just go back over these with a little bit of our highlight and just give you a little bit of indication back there that there's something back there with some snow on it. Get a little bit more liquid white. Got snow on our bushes back there. There we go. Just like that. That looks pretty good. Since we're making this up as we go along, we've never done one like that. It looks pretty good. Clean off all my utensils here. I'm not a big, I'm a dirty painter. Dirty old painter. Now, that, now we're gonna wanna make some darker color trees that are gonna stick out away from these brown trees that we made, right? So we'll scoop up all of our brown, put it back up here with our brown. We'll get a lot of red, a lot of black, and a fair amount of blue. And we'll see. Actually, you know what? Let's put a little bit more blue in there. Make them really blue. Really cold blue. 
mix them all up. bigger fan brush since we're going to make these taller trees that are going to come in on this side. But it's the same thing, no matter the size of your fan brush, you do the trees the same way. Except in this one we're going to do some, like some proper Bob Ross trees right here. So, <clears throat> depends on how far you want stuff away. If I make it smaller than this, these will look further away. If I make them taller, they're going to make them look much closer, so you got to decide what you want to do. And for me, let's do them like this. Just like that. Nice up little thing to go down. I never do them with a trunk, so today we'll try to put a trunk on there. Trunk on our little guys. Okay, then we'll make him a little friend. Like this. Do a little trunk down there. And we'll fix the trunks, don't worry about that. This is a very base shape of our tree, just a shadowy color of our trees, and we're going to highlight them with snow. Let's get rid of this, put a little guy there off in the back, all right, and then we'll do a bigger guy. Get some more paint, this brush is starting to get worn out, I think. There we go. That's not bad. Put our little trunks on there now. We can do that guy, but first what I want to do is get this little tree out here. Alright, get a bit of white on our brush. Here you want to be going sideways, you don't want to dip a lot. That's looking really neat. I like that. Before we get too far ahead, let's scratch in our little tree trunks. Tips of our trees nice and pointy. Like that. And then every so often, if you scrape in just some straight lines, it'll look like you painted this whole forest. show you a cool trick with all that I mean it's nothing we didn't pick up barely any paint we'll kind of pick a spot and make a little grassy bush that lives right there and what we're doing 
doing is just touching with the short edge of the knife and just making little lines. You don't want it to really move. And you want the lines to be pretty straight. Like that. Wipe that off. Take our one inch brush at the bottom. And just like that, wipe it away. Now, what I want to do, I should have done it before I did these trees. But it doesn't really much matter anyway. figure out what we just did. shadow down under there. Now what I want to see if I can do is use that same little bit of brown that we had before. Make our bushes kind of up along the edge of this thing. Maybe some are falling down over it. And now what we can do is have like a little drop off right there. And that'll be cool. I'll show you guys a trick. So Take that same kind of black and bluish shadowy color. And we'll just go down. Just right underneath it. Pull straight down with our knife. Now, as we get closer to us, we want to come further and further and further down each time. So by the time that we're done, we want to be about here. Right, so further, further, further. Like that. Now. Now all I did was use our same tree mixture that we made for over here, kind of pulled it down and then drug it out the way I wanted to drag it there. There we go. Put in our little shadowed area here. So what we can do with that is see if this looks cool. We'll take a little bit of that white and brown and black mixed up here and see what this looks like. Just trying to drag a bit of our snow over the edge. Stop messing it up. 
just hitting with the two inch brush. Uh, sorry, with the fan brush that was covered with our tree paint color. I'm sorry, I get lost when I make these things and I forget that I'm creating a video for everyone else to watch as I create this whole new scene that I've never painted before. So if I get lost in there, eventually I'll be back, stick with me. But uh, right now, just kind of dropping in some grass bits that are below our little shaded area. And I think we could even take a little bit of this white and just kind of line underneath. Where our area is right here. And it's not a river, but it's a little drop off. But I'm kind of doing it the same as I would a water line for the river. I just want to have a little bit of snow kind of piled up here in different areas. Remember, everything underneath, you can always blend away. So don't worry about getting little, little dark areas where you don't want them. You can always blend them away, don't worry. Let's do a little bit of grass over here. Not too much, though. That's what I'm gonna do is literally push in. And if you wanna give them a little faded grassy look, give it a for a second. Just the smallest little bit. Remember, you want to go straight up. You don't want them to go sideways. You know what I mean? Take the bottom of them. You can pull them out. Pull them out. Really good. We got our bits of uh, grass in there with our chunky snow and everything else. We might as well do a couple down this little bit just like that. You start to look so good and you keep doing it and keep doing it, and then all of a sudden you have this whole thing full of grass, and it's not the look that uh, we go for most of the time. Bit on the side of our little thing here. Just like that. Now every so often you got stuff that grows everywhere, so. Grassy bush that lives over there. Just kind of blur the bottom again. My favorite thing to make are these little grassy bushes. Just a bit of stringy grass hanging on for dear life against the cold weather. Our snow a little bit there. It's okay. We can make it work. Just like that. Again, we just want to soften the bit of our bush there at the bottom. We can even put a big old rock over here. Let's get some of our blue and purpley mixture that we have. Put a big old fat rock. All we're worried about is the top edge of what the rock looks like, and then you can just kind of smoosh it around the bottom. Bring it right down to the edge of our little deal right here. Get some white and throw it on the top of him. All right, back again. Just get a little bit of grass underneath these, a little bit of tall grass. I'm just stealing a little bit of color. 
color from underneath it and making a couple swipes up. That's all. Just don't want it underneath there with a lot of space looking through. So then we can take our white with our brown, make a little tree trunk color. Come up here and slightly spread on the trunk of our tree there. Just like that. Just by pulling sideways a little bit, that's all we're doing. Getting a little bit of tree trunk just on the edge of our knife. And then touching and pulling sideways. So the more we go down, the more we pull sideways, it gives us a bigger trunk. sucker back there, did we? Over here. Like that. Get on that guy back here. Go straight down if you want. It works too. So again, don't worry about the shape of these guys because we're going to put a highlight over the top. Around the bottom. Right here, we can even drop in a little bit of snow right there at the bottom of those. Got to be nice and globbed on though, otherwise it just blend right away. A lot of white. Oh, that was so cool looking. I just ruined it. Try to do it again. There we go. Okay, now, this is our last little bit of white for this little teeny guy. Just like that. That's all we need. Because we're going to get our bit of uh, liquid white, which is much thinner than the thick oil stuff that we paint with and we're going to highlight those trees because our rule a thin paint will stick to a thick paint right get a little bit of blue put it in there with our liquid white nice and dabbed in there there we go just like that you can see how much we actually touched of the color. You know what I mean? You don't need to smush your whole thing in there and get it all, uh, and kind of ruin the shape that we did before. It's only the lightest bit. that's going to be our shadows. If you color it all blue, then uh, you won't have any more shadows and your tree won't look as cool. Don't want to cover up your shadows. Shadows are your friend. And you don't want to cover up all of your tree trunk that you made either. Otherwise, what's the point? Wasting all of our time. taking and pulling straight sideways with the white on our knife. We made a little bark on the bottom of our trees over here. So again, we got a big glob of it. We're just going to drop it on. 
underneath where we made our little grassy bushes underneath there. And that's just going to give us this textured look to it. of white, thick white chunks of paint. That's what we want. We don't want to overdo it. We want it to look nice and thick and chunky. And that's going to give us our cool little snowy effects. Snow blown grass. You know, these little drifts of snow that come up everywhere. So we can see we've got our hill. We've got another hill over here. We can even accentuate that hill with a little bit of swipe up and that'll give us our indication underneath our little snow banks we've got some shadows in this hill down here and the best part about painting snow is it doesn't all have to be white none of this has been painted on except for when we cleaned our brush initially and it already you know looks about the same so the more globby you leave it better off you'll be. But angles are most important. You can see we've got this little kind of trough coming down in here. And so what we'll do is we'll put another big old tree right here in the front, just like these guys. And uh, maybe we'll do a rock over here on the side. We can get a little bit of the brown. Come over here to a this little wicked Bob Ross mini mountain. Until you like the way it looks. And then we'll go back in with some white. Pull our, across the top. And just kind of do it like we do our mountains. If you've ever painted with me before and seen how we've done mountains, then you'll be able to see and do a rock like this. Just like that, you know, a nice little snow-covered rock. Just out of the, the browns that we've made up before. So on this one side, it's a little darker. So we'll just kind of throw on some shadowy black in there. Over here. that some of our blue highlight color on there because why not and there we go snow covered rock. And what we can do with some of these swipe out our snow. Why don't we do this one? We cover over all of our little bushes here. All right, and then we'll just redo them again. Smush our snow in. Nice and thick. 
these ones are going to be in the shadow anyway, so we'll get our dark shadowy color. And just pop them in right over the top. We should have done the snow first, but yeah. it's all good. Like that. Take some of the shadowy color. tree color like we had over here for this monster tree and we're not going to use this red or this black or this blue so we might as well just make up the whole thing this will be the last tree that we do so we might as well just make it nice and dark use all of our paint smush it up there we go it's the best part about this paint that we use is so thick won't run off of your palette. All right, now we've got a huge chunk of our dark paint here. We're gonna make a big, big old tree with our, uh, what is this, Simply Simmons number eight. So, same way that we've been doing all of our trees, get a whole lot of paint. Just a nice, big, thick amount of paint in that brush. Come over here and uh, all we want to do in order to make it look closer to us is make it taller than these trees over here because this tree is taller than that tree which makes these look closer so now we need to make something a lot bigger that's going to make this side look closer so as long as we go well why don't we come up here make a decision and just pull it straight down big old honking line for our painting Now the trick about these trees, you don't want to make them like a like a pyramid on the way down. You want to make sure they stay kind of small. And all we're doing is kind of pushing in and bending the tip down, which is going to cause this arc shape. So each time you push it a different way, it's going to make a nice little tree. And we're pushing up. We're not taking it and pushing down. We're pushing up towards it. Just like that. Nice and thick so it sticks on there. And then we'll leave room for our... Uh, Little trunk down the bottom. Let's see what else we can do here. Nice in there. And then everyone has a friend. Everyone's got to have a friend. So let's make up this other one and we'll put it over here. Now, when we start running over this thick paint in the back, learned a trick here. If you get just the smallest bit of paint thinner, right, that's going to keep it from sticking to all this paint in the back. Okay, boom, drop it in, falls right down over the top, just like the other stuff. So if you start picking up too much paint on your brush or you start seeing too much muddiness, then you want to get a little bit of paint thinner on your brush, run it back through your paint. That's going to make it a little bit thicker, a little bit thinner than this, excuse me, and it's going to make it easier to put uh, over the top of it. So why don't we get our, say our trunks are like there. Save that sucker. Let's see. Go back to our brown. We have no more white left. I mean, we could make some up, but let's go back to our brown. At least it's different color to this. There we go, every so 
stuff in. We can scrape in a little tree trunk color. And then we'll go and highlight the thing. There we go. Now you don't have to worry that your tree trunk isn't all the way to the top or it's not you know, symmetrical on each side. It doesn't need to be. It just needs to be um, there. All you gotta do is see it. So don't cover it all up. There we go. Now we're gonna take the rest of our liquid wine. Probably need to get some more actually. It seems like we didn't get enough initially. Get back to our white a second time. You do snow on the ground, you do a lot of paint. Get our little bit of our blue over there. All right. A little bit of red in this snow on this side. And then we're going to come back in with our brush. Use the tip and remember, don't cover all the shadows. Don't want to cover your shadow. This is where you make your tree look like a tree, but don't get rid of all those shadows. tree trunk and we want to stay sort of bright but as we go down the further we go down the more dark the tree is going to get so down here around the bottom don't worry about it being super bright white you don't want it to be bright white just like that bingo bango There we go, now we got a little bit of ground underneath there. Finding final touches, we'll put some more grasses underneath there that I love doing. Just do them in between the two trees, maybe one over here. Yeah, tell me way do you like them. You don't have to do them the way I like them. Just do it until you like the way it looks. Goes like that. We'll do one guy off the side. I love doing them where they come out like this and they just make a little. It's just like hanging on for dear life down here at the bottom, trying to survive this cold winter. A little bit of grass. Don't worry about the bottom, you can always fix the bottom. With this though, you don't want the knife to slide, otherwise you'll have a, not be a straight old line like that. So we can come back in here, fix this one over here. Just like that. Pretty wicked looking painting there, if I do say so. step back while we clean our brushes here before we even look at the dang thing I want to tell you to follow happy little landscapes on Facebook uh, and on Instagram ha at happy little landscapes if you come across my Etsy page it's at happy landscape art and that'll take you to where you can buy this beautiful painting let's see what else we need in this thing let's see what we need I think it looks really good the only thing I would say is let's try to do let's try to do something crazy right here, okay? Let's get crazy, as Bob always says. Okay, now what I want to try is doing a little bit of this. 
this. liquid white. Just kind of highlight that bush a little bit. Back here. Maybe take a little of the brown and put it underneath the bottom there. Scrape in some sticks and twigs. Nice little, nice little bush there. Okay, what I want to do this time instead is get a little bit of this purpley color. All right, and we'll go back in here and pop on a nice little bushy bush at the bottom there. Just highlight it with our liquid white again. Okay. Like so. There we go. Stop before we make a mess. like that. Don't look too bad to me. Doesn't look too bad to me, you guys. Find some snowy bits in there. And just because I have all this extra white, we might as well just really load it on there in different areas. Just leave it real thick in there, especially up close to us. We want people to see the details in the snow banks, right? So it's got to be thick in order for that to happen. It was just glob on the rest of that white and makes it look really realistic. I 
I like it. We used up all of our stuff. Got rid of all the paint. Don't know why we even got the yellow out. We really didn't even need it. I guess we can highlight some of the trees in yellow if we were so inclined. This. sun-kissed color. I like it. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Can't think of anything else that I want to put on there. We'll find out. Well guys, as we finish cleaning up, I'd like to thank you for uh, hanging out with me and watching me paint this evening, coming up with one of our very own composition creations here, just right out of our head and onto the canvas right in front of everybody. Um, I'd like to thank you guys for uh, for tuning into my channel, for subscribing to my YouTube channel, which is uh, Happy Little Landscapes, if you find me on YouTube. Uh, all the way down to everyone who purchased a single one of my paintings this year. Uh, it's been a great year. Um, I literally started painting in April of 2019, sorry, April of 2019 this year, and uh, it's literally about to be 2020. I have 53, 54 sales. Um, and I'm a brand new painter, so if I can do it, you can do it. Let's uh, let's do it, let's get painting. If you like the way I do things, maybe I can show you a cool way that you might not know, or a brush that you might not use, or maybe doing clouds with a knife that you didn't think about before. But um, follow my channel, and uh, I'm glad that you were able to sit here and watch it with us. Uh, if you'd like, you can follow my Facebook page, at Happy Little Landscapes, sorry, at Happy Landscape Art. It will take you to my page, which is named Happy Little Landscapes. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Happy Little Landscapes, or if this painting is something that you'd like to purchase, uh, you can visit my Etsy store, which is at Happy Landscape Art on Etsy. Uh, the link will also be in the description. So, once again, thanks for uh, thanks for hanging out with me. And if you don't already subscribe to my channels or follow my pages, please do so. The fun part about painting. <laughs> The fun part about painting for me is I don't know what it's going to look like until we get done. I don't know what the, you know, I have an idea about what I want to do the sky and how I want the stuff to look, but until it gets on the canvas, you never know. Um, so if you're ever nervous to try something, do it. Try it. If you don't like it, you can always scrape it off and start over. But if you do like it, you might find a cool technique that works for you that you didn't, you didn't even know existed. I've never taken a single class. All I do is try something. If I don't like the way it looks, I don't do that anymore. If I do like the way it looks, I try to remember so I can do it again in the future. But uh, yeah, like I said, thanks for watching this, guys. And uh, give me a like, a thumbs up, a, a whatever these YouTubers say nowadays. Just like my page, subscribe to my channel, and better yet, go purchase a painting at my Etsy shop. Uh, all the links you'll be able to find. But other than that, thanks for hanging out with me, and I'm gonna go clean up and uh, get this thing in a frame and post a picture of it on Instagram. So you guys take care and we'll see you on the next painting.